So the fourth st step, search, building a comprehensive search strategy. So now that you have built up um, an idea of the type of sources that you might begin to use, start thinking about them. And again, bringing this all into beginning with your, re your research question. So you need to ask yourself some questions before you begin the searching process. Do you have a purpose for your research question? Do you know the type of study or the sources you need to focus on? And do you have access to these sources? So before you approach, if you pick a database, for example, you need to be aware of the functionality of the database and how you're going to begin to build your search. So you need to develop what's called a search syntax. So using Boolean logic, which is the and, the or, and the not. So if we were searching for stress and eating disorders, we would be retrieving papers that would tell us only about stress and eating disorders. And if we decided that we were only looking at adults, we might say eating disorders or anorexia, not children. For searching, we're putting our key term eating disorders into inverted commas. This means that we want to retrieve papers which will focus on eating disorders as the key phrase and not break up the phrase which eating in one part of our paper and disorders in another. Truncating, so this is where we will put an asterisk after one of our words, for example, stress. And this is where we want to pick up other variations of stress. We also want to bring in papers with, which might also talk about the stresses, being stressed and stressing as well. There's also operators called proximity operators. For example, um, activist with the asterisk N2 living. This will pick up papers on activities of daily living and daily living activities as well. The wildcard then will pick up um, variations in European and American spellings. For example, organization being spelt with the Z or the S. Parentheses then is another way of organizing your search, eating disorders in inverted commas and stress. So the database will, will go off and first retrieve papers with eating disorders and then bring stress also into the retrieval. Remember that each database has its own wildcard, truncation and proximity symbols. And it's a good idea to read the help sheet to familiarize yourself. So again, preparing for your search and um, using subject headings and why do you use them? They are an index or thesis within a specific database and they will guide you to related terms for your key topics. Using them, you will retrieve high quality papers for your search. So it's really important if you start using them from the outset as they will guide your research much quicker and you'll find the more relevant information as well. So there's no thesaurus or indexing in Scopus or Web of Science. Web of Science is another multidisciplinary database. And this is just an example of um, the various databases and how the subject headings are indexed in them. For example, in PsycInfo, um, the subject heading, there is a subject heading there for eating disorders, whereas in Medline, it is termed feeding and eating disorders. Okay, so we're going to do a sample search in Cell and Complete for eating disorders and stress. So we'll go to our Explore collections from the library website, our drop down for databases A to Z, and we're looking for Synal Complete, which we'll find, scroll down from our list. So we're clicking into Synal Complete. And we're brought into a platform for EBSCO, EBSCO host. So there are about 20 databases on this platform. Let's be aware that they all have a different subject focus. So we're going to do our search in Synal Complete, which is the core database for nursing, midwifery and allied health. Okay, so let's pop up here. We're going to go straight to our Synal subject headings. And we're going to type in eating disorders into our browse box. Click on browse. Okay, so I have my term here for eating disorders. I click in. And I can see that eating disorders is coming under the broader heading of behavioral and mental disorders. So let's go down here. So it's like a hierarchy. I have eating disorders here, but I can see also that eating disorders could be exploded as a term. So what this means is that the subheadings on anorexia, anorexia nervosa, binge eating disorder, they could all be included in my search if I exploded the term, but I don't want to do that here. I'm just going to select some of them. So right down to bulimia nervosa. 
I'm going to include them all as major focus. So what this means is that Cine Complete will go off and retrieve papers which have any of these terms as a major focus. So you can see it's all set up here over at the side. Do a search database. Okay, so this is the first start of our search. So before I move on, I'm actually going to sign in here and make sure that I save my search strategies as I go along. So I'll click on here to sign in. So really important to set up yourself an account straight off because by saving your searches, you can keep track of exactly where you are and what you're doing. So let's just get into our sign in. Here we go. OK, so we're in now and I can see that I'm up there at the top. OK, so continuing on, I'm now going to type in eating disorders. Good. Or D-E-R-S. Or. So I have got some prompts here for other terms that I might use, but I might just be interested here in eating disorders or anorexia. So I'm going to pop that up. And I'm going to search here, select the title, and I'm going to do the same down here for abstract. Okay. And I'm going to select my abstract and sort of put or between them. Okay. So the reason I'm putting my search together for my key concept here, eating disorders, is I'm running a comparative search now for the subject heading eating disorders or anorexia in the title of the abstract because I want to maximize the retrieval of papers. I want to get the high quality papers that will guide my research straight off. So let's do my search. Okay, so I can see that I have found nearly 5,000 papers more, okay, by combining my search that way. So I'm going to clear here. The reason I'm clear, clearing my search is to make sure for the next step of my search that my uh, previous results aren't coming in on top of my new results. So we're just going to pop stress in here, the second part of our search. Do our prompt for or, so maybe or anxiety or depression might be useful here to use as well. And we'll do the same. We're going to select our title. And our stress again. Or we're placing or between them. Now, I'm not going to look for a subject heading here for stress at the moment because I'm what I'm really doing is scoping to see what's out there on eating disorders and stress. You're going to become more familiar with your research topic as you read and search, and you may decide that it might be useful to include the subject heading also. So let's do our search. So the reason we're searching across title or abstract as well is to make our search more comprehensive. If we were just searching without selecting a field, this would be too random and we might miss key papers in this way. So now we've run this part of our search. OK, so we're going to clear again. So now you can see your search strategy is building up and we now want to bring together the searches we've run for eating disorders and also stress. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our search here for eating disorders and stress. And bring in our Boolean search with and. And we have over two and a half thousand results. So it's really important at this point to maybe just do a quick scroll down, see what kind of papers are being retrieved against the keywords that you've used. So we can see straight over on the left hand side that our date range is running back to 1966. But we might be only interested in the last five years. So let's pop in 2014. Hit return and see what we now get. So we have over a thousand papers now going back from 2014. OK, and let's have a look at some of them. They look like they, they may be uh, relevant. So if you've over a thousand papers, that's too much to go through. There, there's one of two things you can do. You can, first of all, maybe something like body image within eating disorders and stress. So you could go back to your search and put input body image back in to see how does that further refine your search. Or you could maybe select five to ten papers that you think may be relevant, read them, 
um, pick some keywords and use them to build up your, your vocabulary for your searching as well. And then go back and search again. And that's what the searching process is. It's iterative, which means that what you're doing is you're searching, you're reading, refining and going back again all the time. And what that also does is it builds your knowledge um, of the research that you're doing and also increases your, your confidence in the searching process. OK, so let's just go back up here. So it's really important. Um, I'm in my own account here. I can save my searches. Um, I'm going to do that now. So if I want to save all of those search strings, really useful because it means that as I'm going through my, my process for my research question, at each time I can sign in and see exactly where I left off from my search and maybe what papers I had selected and read as well. So I'm going to select all of my search strings here. OK, and I'm going to go up here to save searches. So I select that. OK, so I have an option here to save my search. It's already uh, clicked here, but I also have an option here to click on alert. And if I do that, what that means is that I can, depending on how I title my search. So in this one, I'm going to say eating, I'm going to title it eating disorders. Stress. So it means that I can ask CINAHL to maybe email me once a day, once a week and to alert me if anything new comes in on eating disorders or stress. But here I'm just going to save my search permanently for now. So I click on save search permanently and click save. OK, so I can go back up to new search. OK, so I always go back to my search history to retrieve the search. OK, now because I'm still in the database, my search is still active. So my five search strings are still there. OK. So if I wanted to retrieve that search, what I first need to do is I need to clear my search history. OK, so I select my five search strings. I delete searches. And OK. So I'm coming back in now. I may have been out of the database for a few hours. I'll go back up to my search history. I'll click in. I'm now looking for my retrieve searches because I want to find that search again. OK, so. I have a lot of searches in here, so I'm going to scroll down to find eating disorders alphabetically. OK, and here we are. So I retrieve the save search. There's my five search strings. I can rerun. And I have my over a thousand papers there again. And again, also important as well, if you're using right there, if you're using software like EndNote, maybe to manage your papers as well. So you might want to select, for example, maybe click on your share here. You might want to select maybe we may not go with 50. We might just want to go with. Sorry, now that's jumped back on me. Back here again. So we might just want to select. Maybe the first five. First three, maybe even just to show you how it works. OK, so now my folder is activated. So this is a temporary folder um, which works on any of the EBSCO databases. So what it means is that you might just quickly want to export maybe some of your papers straight over to EndNote, for example. You might want to print them, you might want to email them or you might want to save them as well. OK, so moving on, we're now on to steps five and six. We have covered some of the final step, which, which is manage. So select your papers. So it's really useful to maybe use a checklist to decide what you will include and exclude. You've now done your searching. You may have exported some of them over to EndNote, for example. And you now need to decide, well, what are you going to use? And again, this is really important um, to be looking at the title and the abstract of a paper. There are some toolkits out there, for example, the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme from CASP and the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine, which will give you some guidelines on the particular type of questions that you will ask of your research, depending on the study type you're doing. It could be a randomised controlled trial. It could be an integrated review as well. Really important to read more in depth as you refine your selection. So manage your papers. So as you saw, I saved my search in um, Cine Complete. Really important to document your searches and to see exactly where you're at. You can export your references then to EndNote desktop or online. You can create groups in your EndNote library to keep your references organized. When you're using Word then to write up for your research, you can insert your 
citations and create your reference lists. And if you're doing some group research, you can also share your papers on, through EndNote as well. So some takeaways from this session on finding the literature, always look for quality, relevance and currency with your sources. Is there more? Sometimes you may find that you're not finding a lot on your topic. It could be sometimes that you're going too broad at the start. Maybe you're putting in too much of a variation in your keywords as well. If you're finding very little, other places to look might be papers that you've already found, reference lists, related items, and citation databases such as Weather Science and Scopus, which I already mentioned. And I can't stress enough, remember to document your search strategies, save your results. So I've also included links to some of the sources that I've mentioned throughout the session. A lot of these sources will also be found in your subject lib guides. And if you need further help, I'm Liz Dorr, the Faculty Librarian for Education and Health Sciences. You can also look at your subject lib guides or you can use our online inquiry service, Ask Us, Tell Us. Thank you.